Hello, yeah, in this video, I want to have some discussions about how to perform explanatory factor analysis for mixed data using R. So here, mixed data means we will have continuous uh, polytomous and binary variables uh, or data uh, in our data sets. So it's a fairly complex structure uh, in our data set. And whether we can perform a fact analysis um, using R. Actually, I just want to introduce two R packages, uh, which has some um, functionalities for EFA on mixed data. Okay. So let's first set a random C, uh, and uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure this is the best way, but I want to generate uh, mix, a mixed data set in which the variables are correlated. Uh, so uh, I'm using uh, the Coppola uh, package. So this will be generating a multivariate data set with certain correlation structures. Okay. Uh, but again, uh, I will not, I'm not sure this is the best way to generate the data. Uh, I'll come back to this point at the end of the video, okay? So let's load Coppola, uh, and uh, we wanna specify a correlation matrix. So we have, um, this is a correlation matrix. Um, you see we have uh, um, the correlations uh, are positive, and they're 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, so they're not small correlations, okay? So we want our data to be redundant uh, so that we can expect uh, a better fact analysis results, okay? So we can generate um, a Gaussian Coppola uh, with a specified correlation. So by using this uh, line of command, the function is normal Coppola, uh, and uh, the parameter is uh, equal to the correlation matrix. So we're going to use a lower uh, triangle, uh, dimension equal to 3, and uh, this dispersion equal to n. So, and this is our Coppola, and we sample size 100, and we generate a correlated data from the Coppola. Okay. So after that, um, we got six variables. Uh, I think I got six variables. Yeah. And we want to have two continuous variables, two polytomous variables, and two binary variables. And I'm going to get these variables uh, for, um, for continuous variables. I just doing normal distributions and uh, uniform distributions. Okay. Uh, for we convert continuous variable to categorical polytomous variables and binary variable using the cut. Uh, we just cut the uh, continuous variable into, uh, say, low, median, and high. That's the first polytomous variable. The second one is A, B, C, D. And then the binary one, binary two, is just the whether the median uh, you know, the continuous one variable is, is larger than its median, then it's a one, otherwise it's zero. Similar for binary two, okay. So obviously continuous one, continuous two, and binary one and binary two are very correlated, okay. All right, um, and then we put everything together into a data frame. So here is our data frame uh, here. Um, now uh, we perform factor analysis of mixed data. It's called the FAMD. And we load the library. So this is an important library called the factor mine R. Okay. And uh, it has a function FAMD. Um, the syntax is you put the correlated data um, frame uh, in the first argument and then uh, NCP equal to five uh, and graph equal to false. Okay, so if we really want to uh, 
learn about this function. Uh, you can pull up the documentation here. Uh, so FAMD is the principal component method dedicated to explore data with both continuous and categorical uh, variables. Um, it can be seen roughly as a mix between um, PCA and MCA, multiple correspondence analysis, okay, and etc. So the NCP here uh, is the number of dimensions uh, kept in the results. By default, is five. Okay. All right. So let's run that, and then we can take a look at the summary of the output. Mm. You can see it uh, has uh, individuals, uh, just printed the first 10. These are the uh, estimates for each individual data points. Uh, the distance is the distance of that observation from the center of the entire data set. And then the dimension one, dimension two, dimension three, uh, now we get these uh, three, um, it only printed out three dimensions, and then you got the loading factors. Uh, contribution is uh, how much uh, contribution of that data point to the dimension. Okay, so, and COS2 is the, they call quality of uh, representation. So that's actually, uh, I think the, um, cosine value uh, of that vector um, and you know uh, so it's uh, basically if a co cost 2 is close to 1 then it's a really uh, high quality it's very related uh, to that uh, dimension otherwise close to 0 it means a very little relationship uh, so you've got this uh, these are Output from uh, the principal component analysis. Uh, similarly, you have uh, continuous variable, so it's grouped into continuous variable and a categorical variable. Um, you have similar uh, statistic here. Okay, so um, if you want to plot out the factor map, um, we can just directly use the plot uh, function here and choice equal to in individual. Uh, you can see it plotted a uh, dimension one and dimension two. That's the first two uh, principal components. You get these factors, uh, plots, uh, all the individual observations with labeled uh, the numbers. Um, and you kind of see the ABC and the low, median, and high, okay? Uh, but it's a warning sign is this 65 and labeled data points because too many uh, variables are like overlapping, okay? And also, if you want to see contributions, you use uh, choice equal to VAR. So these will be the contributions. Uh, you can see um, the continuous and uh, I think uh, binary uh, continuous one, continuous two, polytomous one, binary two, uh, polytomous two, they are all uh, have large projections on dimension one. Uh, but then um, binary one and continuous one, continuous two are close to like x axis, the dimension one axis, so they're, they're not projecting much onto dimension two. Okay, so this is what we see. And if you want um, interpretations of the outputs, um, more detailed, uh, or something more like a traditional PCA, you can use this uh, factor, factor extra library. So you can extract the eigenvalues. And this is the eigenvalues. And you know, um, you want to look for large eigenvalues and look at the variance explained and also cumulative variance explained. So if you want, say, um, 
80% variance plane is like almost up to the first three um, dimensions, okay, uh, or factors. And if you want to the traditional screen plot, you look at that. Um, so looks like uh, uh, the first vector explains a lot of variance, variance, okay, and then comes down to the second and third. Uh, so uh, and it reached about eighty percent. Uh, so that's why I think the originally uh, the previously you see about uh, you know um, three dimensions display. You can also extract the variables uh, so you got to the coordinates uh, uh, CO so cost to quality of representation the contribution uh, you can print them out so you can look at the uh, square uh, contribution to the dimension um, these are all the previous uh, shown statistics but in a more detailed uh, or more organized uh, way for pre uh, presentation you can generate several plot here um, for uh, variables or contributions uh, and then contribution to the second dimension. Uh, you can see it levels off really quickly. Okay. Um, and then also you can separate them by quantitative uh, factors and contribution by uh, qualitative. Uh, dimensions. Oh, this is for coloring. With coloring, if you want to use color to represent the strengths of correlations. Okay. And then you want uh, qualitative uh, variables and you do the contribution um, plots. And you can see the, um, uh, you know, whether they have project, large projection on the dimension one versus dimension two. Individual, you can use the get f a m d in i n d. Uh, you get the individual uh, data points, and then you can plot out uh, the uh, quality uh, of uh, representation here. Um, look at the uh, all these uh, data vectors. Um, so I want to point out. Um, you know, I have some doubt about uh, or uncertainty about these uh, functions because uh, remember the data generating process I used? I used the Coppola, kind of uh, cheated a little bit. Uh, to me, I think uh, mixed data is very complex. Okay, you want to generate continuous polytomous binary data that are correlated. Uh, and remember in the traditional fact analysis, we have uh, a system of linear regression models uh, to generate the data. Uh, if we use similar uh, systems uh, regression models, then we'll have uh, linear regressions, we have uh, generalized linear models, uh, and maybe with common predictors. Um, but I have not tried that way to generate data. Uh, and also, um, you know, this is really getting into the weeds of uh, multivariate statistics. Uh, so it's a fairly complex. Uh, so I, I hope I can uh, f really find the mathematics of uh, fact analysis for mixed data, and then uh, do more videos getting deeper into uh, the mathematics of all these uh, uh, numerical results and the graphical this place here. Uh, but uh, I showed you uh, several packages for which you can generate some results uh, for the principal component of mixed data and then take a look at the uh, factor structure of the data set. Okay, timing's running out. Thank you.